Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to continue talking about uh, alternating current in different circuits. The previous lecture was um, about circuits which contain resistor, that's one part, and then resistor and uh, capacitor. That was the second part of the previous lecture. Now, in this lecture, uh, instead of capacitor, I will um, consider uh, inductor. So, let's consider we have a circuit which contains the generator of alternating current, resistor, and inductor. That's what will be considered um, in this lecture, and I will derive, similarly to, similarly to a previous lecture, I will try to derive um, the value of the current in this circuit based on the generated EMF. Okay, now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. It's presented on unizor.com. Uh, every lecture on this website contains detailed notes. So I recommend you to watch this lecture from the website uh, rather than if you found it on YouTube or wherever. So you go to the website, you choose the Physics for Teens course, and then, th and then this is the part which is called electromagnetism, and the chapter is um, the Ohm's law for uh, alternating current. Uh, okay. Now, there is a prerequisite course physics for, uh, to Physics for Teens. It's called Mass for Teens on the same website. I do recommend you to uh, either study this course or be comfortable with whatever concepts are in this course. Um, basically, it includes a little bit more of um, uh, calculus than usually in high school. It's probably up to the first maybe year in the college. Um, but anyway, this is necessary uh, because, for instance, for this particular lecture and the previous one, I'm using differential equations. So mass is a, ma a ma mass is a must <laughs> for uh, studying physics. All right, so let's go directly to this particular uh, problem which we have at hand. So um, let's consider that we have a generator of alternating current which generates the oscillation uh, oscillating uh, voltage uh, according to sinusoidal oscillations this is my generated electromotive, electromotive force EMF or voltage on this particular generator now this voltage goes from one end to another, and then since it's alternating, it goes back. So this is what is described by this particular equation, where T is obviously the time, and omega is um, ang uh, angular uh, speed of rotation of the rotor inside the generator. And that's what actually makes this alternating um, current to have this sinusoidal um, oscillations. Now, as um, the electric current goes uh, around this uh, circuit in this direction or in that direction, doesn't really matter. At any moment, the um, EMF, which uh, is a basically a difference in potential between these two ends, um, since this is a, a connection in series, it actually drops. So this difference between potentials between this and this is drops here and drops here. So these are voltage drops here, difference between potential between this and this, and this is difference in potential between this and this. So obviously E of T is equal at any moment of time. So the difference between this and this is equal to difference between this and this plus difference between this and this, right? 
it's plain arithmetic actually. It's like 5 is equal to 2 plus 3, right? Okay, now, what do we know about these two voltage drops? Well, this is the voltage drop on a resistor, and at any given time, it actually obeys the regular Ohm's law. This is the current, and this is the resist resistance of this particular resistor. This is the regular Ohm's law. Voltage equals to current times um, resistance. So that's easy. Okay. Um, now, I didn't mention it, but it's kind of obvious that since this is a closed circuit, the current which goes through this is exactly the same as current which goes through this one. So that's why I'm using IT not without any kind of uh, indices here. Because uh, I of T here and I of T here is exactly the same. Now, let's talk about the uh, voltage drop on inductor. Okay. First of all, why the voltage drops on the inductor? If it's a straight wire, for instance, without all these loops, the voltage wouldn't drop. It would just, you know, there is no resistance actually. But there is some resistance if, we, if this is a coil. Now, if you remember, there is a self-induction um, effect. Whenever you have a coil, you have certain electromagnetic flux, which is the result of the fact that this is loop after loop after loop, because every loop has certain electromagnetic field inside this loop. And when the flux is changing, it generates its own electromotive force, that's called self-induction, which is always goes against the uh, change of the voltage uh, which, which comes on the ends of this. So that's why it's always written as as a rate of change of the magnetic flux is basically generating this particular voltage and it's always written with a minus sign because it resists the original voltage. Now in our case we don't really need the minus sign because all we need is actually the, the drop of the voltage. We, we, we need this negative voltage because that's exactly what we are adding. Drop here and drop here to get the, um, the voltage over there. So in our case we don't need this minus. Now both are functions of time. And now let's talk about electromagnetic flux. Well, electromagnetic flux obviously depends on the uh, current which goes through this particular inductor. And it also depends on certain properties of the inductor, which, which are called inductance. So inductance is that coefficient which characterizes um, the properties of the inductor. And it obviously depends on, for instance, the radius, uh, how many loops we have, etc., what kind of a material it, it's made of, etc. So this thing is equal to L times I of T, where L is inductance, which is supposed to be given in as much as the resistance is given, if we want to know what exactly is happening with the circuit. So this is basically a definition of the inductance. Inductance is that coefficient which contains the uh, current with the change of uh, the flux, the rate of change of, uh, of the flux. Okay, I made a mistake. I need not just current. I need the change of the current, obviously. Current by itself doesn't really cause anything. Change of the current, rate of change of the current, is causing change of change, change of the value of the flux, and that's what generates the self-induction and the voltage drops. So again, change of the rate of the current 
is causing change of the uh, rate of the flux, rate of change of the flux, and that's what causing the self induction, which is basically a functional equivalent of the resistance, because self induction is directed against the uh, change of the voltage. So we have actually expressed these two in um, in terms of the values which are kind of given R and L and the one which needs to be defined this is the current so this is given because this is the formula and these are all contains only one unknown function IFT the current so it's a differential equation, right? So let's just write it down. Uh, VR uh, okay. sine omega t equals VR, which is R times I of t plus VL, which is L times I of t. So I'm using just the uh, little slash to signify uh, derivative, just easier. Well, obviously what we have to do to um, solve this particular equation is bring it into some relatively um, familiar uh, kind of a format. Okay, I'll divide everything by L. So, uh, and I will use y of t equals to i of t. I'll use the different letter and I'll explain you why in a second. So, in this particular case, if I will divide everything by L, my equation would be y plus r divided by L. So, I'll use a equals to r divided by L. So, it would be a y of t equals and I will use B is equal to E0 divided by L B sine omega t now if you look at this equation and if you um, uh, watch my previous lecture where instead of inductor we had the capacitor the equation was exactly the same I was just using different values for A and B, different constants, doesn't really matter, but the resulting equation is exactly the same. Now I was discussing how to solve this particular equation in the previous lecture, and uh, the notes for the previous lecture have even more detailed explanation of how to solve this equation. So right now I'm just referring you to that lecture and notes for that previous lecture, um, to uh, familiarize yourself how to solve this equation. Now I will just write the solution which I have borrowed from the previous lecture. And the solution is y of t is equal to b a times sine omega t minus omega cosine omega t divided by a square plus omega square and plus constant some kind of constant okay now first what I will do I will change it slightly um, what I will do I will use the following A is equal to R divided by L, right? So, what I will do is the following. I don't need this picture anymore. Um, I will use A is equal to um, 
uh, sine a divided by a divided by square root of a square plus omega square is equal to sine of some angle um, psi and omega divided by square root of a square plus omega square is equal to cosine of psi. Right? These are two various sum of squares of them is equal to 1. So I can always find the angle psi which is equal to arc tangent of a divided by uh, omega. This is a simple trigonometry. This is less than 1 by, by absolute value. This is less than 1 by absolute value. And sum of square is equal to 1. So that's why I can always find uh, such an angle um, uh, psi equals to r, r tangents of this. And obviously sine is equal to this and cosine is equal to this. So what does it bring me to? Well, here. If this is sine and this is cosine of some angle psi then this is sine times sine minus cosine times cosine which is what which is a cosine of uh, omega t plus psi and that i have to multiply by b you divide by now this is square of this times square of this, right? One square is used to uh, assign these values, so another square root of this remains uncovered. And this is my y of t. Well, y of t is actually i of t. It's a current. I just used the y to have the same equation as in the previous lecture. So this is done and plus constant. So that's what I have. Very much similar to the previous lecture, actually. This would look good. Okay. Now, if we will put uh, our values back into this. Oh, I think I forgot the minus sign. Yes. We had sine times sine minus cosine times cosine. This is um, uh, minus cosine of their sum. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, now it's good. I would like to change slightly. Minus cosine of omega t plus sine. I would like to change it to sine. Why, why, why do I want to change it to sine? Because my uh, EMF is expressed as an oscillation of sine. And I would like actually my uh, current to also to be in terms of sine with some phase shift. But I would like to change it a little bit so I will have similarly sine here and sine for I of t. So for this I will do a little trigonometric trick. So minus cosine. Um, okay, now sine and cosine are related in this way. Sine of alpha is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus alpha, right? Now, using this, I will put minus sine of pi over 2 minus omega t minus psi, which is equal to sine. Now, sine is odd function, so if I change sine here, I have to change sine here. So it would be omega t minus uh, pi over 2 um, minus psi. Am I right? Omega t would be with a plus, pi, pi over 2 would be with a minus, and uh, this would be with a plus. Correct. Now, what is my uh, function, uh, what is my angle psi? I know that tangent of psi is equal to a over omega, right? Now, if I have pi minus 2, uh, pi, pi over 2 minus psi, 
well, tangent of this is equal to cotangent of that, right? Remember, this is my uh, right triangle. If this is A, this is omega. This is psi. Tangent is equal A over uh, omega. This is pi over 2 minus uh, psi. So, uh, cotangent, basically, uh, of, of uh, this angle is equal to A over omega, or tangent is equal to omega. So tangent of pi over 2 minus uh, psi is equal to omega over A. And what I will do, I will just use the w more familiar letter phi for this, and now I can see that the whole thing is equal to sine of omega t minus phi, where tangent phi is equal to omega over a. Okay? So that's it. Now I will use this to substitute into this formula. So what do I have? I have minus b, b is e0 now that was minus, so minus actually goes here, I don't have minus anymore, I have this. So I have b times sine of this, so b is e0 over l times sine of omega t minus phi divided by square root of a square, which is r square divided by l square plus omega square equals e0 sine omega t plus, sorry, minus, minus phi divided by, if I will put L inside the square root, it will cancel this one. So I will have r square plus, and it will be multiplied by this one, square. Now, Another little um, kind of recollection. L times omega. Again, if you remember, it's one of the previous lecture. We were using L uh, times omega as something which is called um, inductive reactance of the inductor, which is equivalent to its resistance. It's if you will take a look at the units of measurement, it will be ohms. And again, it's similar in some way to x with a, um, index C, which is uh, reactance of the uh, capacitor, capacitive uh, reactance. So capacitor has certain characteristic which is equivalent to a resistance, and it's called capacitive reactance. And inductors have characteristic similar to resistance, and it's called inductive reactance, and that's what it is. So as a result, we have the formula and plus constant, by the way, which I still have it, right? Okay, so now this is basically kind of a representation of the Ohm's law for AC, for alternating current, which includes um, uh, resistor and uh, inductor. This is actually <coughs> very much like for the capacitor, for the capacitors, I have E0 divided by R squared plus XC squared. But for inductors, they have xl square here. So this represents this square root of r square plus xl square. It represents something which is equivalent to a resistance for the whole circuit. If the whole circuit contains resistor and inductor, so their entire resistance, in a way, is the square root of this. And it looks like um, the Ohm's law for direct current. You have some kind of a um, uh, voltage, which is E0 times 
sine omega t and you have some kind of equivalent to a resistance there is this angle phi this is a phase shift so the oscillation of the uh, current are shifted from the oscillation of the um, electromotive force uh, now if it's minus phi it means it shifted to the right now if you remember the shift was uh, different for a capacitor in the previous lecture I had plus here uh, it was sine of omega t plus phi so if it's only um, a, a capacitor with um, with a resistor then the oscillation are shifted to the left if there is no resistor, if you remember, it was minus pi over 2. Now, um, in this case, absolutely similarly, if there is no um, resistor, it will go to uh, minus pi over 2. And again, we were addressing this uh, in one of the lect previous lectures, where we didn't have resistor at all. So, just as a check. So when we didn't have a resistor, we had minus pi over 2. Now, if we do have um, a resistor, it's a little bit more complicated. But if I will use this, now, uh, omega over A is um, omega over A is RL, which is XL divided by R. So that's my tangent. So if my R is equal to zero, if there is no resistance, it's infinity. Tangent of at the angle is infinity, and that's what pi over two actually is. The tangent of pi over two is infinity. Um, so um, that would be exactly minus pi over two if there is no R here. Now, obviously, you understand that when I'm saying something like tangent of pi over 2 is equal to infinity, it's not exactly correct mathematical statement. There is no such thing. Tangent is not defined at pi over 2. However, if my angle is approaching pi over 2, it's tangent approaching infinity. Okay, that's more kind of mathematical um, expression. Uh, but for physics, actually, they, they do this simplified version without any problems. So that's basically it. This is what... Um, um, what the current in, in, in the circuit which contains resistor and inductor with uh, reactants XL that's how it looks and the phi is defined as arc, arc tangent of XL over R, over, over R. okay so um, that's it so now we have basically two cases well three cases plain R plain resistor then uh, in the previous lecture I was talking about resistor and capacitor so it's RC circuit now this lecture is um, RL circuit and that's the formula difference between capacitor and inductor uh, in this circuit is this minus sign minus here for inductor and plus for capacitor and obviously for capacitor I have Xc um, and Xc if you remember is 1 over C times Omega Xl is Omega L so these are equivalent to resistance for a resistor and yeah, they're both called reactants. This is capacitive reactants and this is inductive reactants. They're characteristic of both the uh, device itself, whether it's capacitor or um, inductor, that's C and L, and also it depends on the frequency and on, on the uh, speed of rotation. So the higher speed of rotation, the higher reactance or resistance if you wish of the inductor and uh, as far as the capacitor is con is concerned it's just the other way around the higher um, the frequency of rotation uh, angular speed 
uh, the smaller resistance of this particular capacitor. And uh, if my um, uh, alternating current is oscillating faster and faster, the capacitor presents less and less resistance. Inductor is the other way around. The more frequently my oscillation oscillations are going, the more resistance the current will feel from the um, uh, uh, from from this inductor. Okay, basically that's it for today. I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture, um, and the next one would be probably kind of a combination of whatever we know. It will be resistor and inductor and capacitor in one circuit. I specifically decided to go through all these three different um, variations with gradual increasing of the um, complexity because there is some mathematics here and some people might feel a little bit uncomfort <coughs> uncomfortable so I decided to approach the same thing from a few different sides so you will basically feel how alternating current is going through all the different kinds of circuits. That's it, thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>